Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Saturday, September 17th, 2022. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Helps us out a ton. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comment section below. If you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. Of course, I'm always running my $15 MLB best bet, so check it out at Pick Dogs Premium. All righty, here we go. Here are the games for Saturday, September 17th. First up, we see our first of two doubleheaders on the board for Saturday's card. The first one, the Minnesota Twins and the Cleveland Guardians. Now, no official starters for Game 2 right now. Josh Winder and Shane Bieber are listed for Game 1, but like we've seen all season long, these could certainly change. You know, Shane Bieber and the Guardians have really done a good job against Minnesota as of late. Uh, the season series now, the Guardians lead nine games to five. We'll see what the final score is for Friday night's game. But Shane Bieber faced these Twins back on September 11th. He went six and a third, giving up only one earned run with seven strikeouts. So he's in really good form. Is he already now below three on the season? I'd have to lean towards the Guardians when Bieber's on the mound against the Twins. So uh, that's where I'm looking at right now in this doubleheader, but no official plays. Next up, we see another doubleheader between the Cincinnati Reds and the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, there's a bunch of starting pitchers being listed on various websites. Right now, MLB.com doesn't have a single starter listed for either game. And ESPN's got Hunter Green, Jose Quintana, Dakota Hudson, and Mike Miner as the listed starters. You know, what I will say is the Reds competed in game one of this series, and I do like their chances if they face Dakota Hudson or Jose Quintana to at least steal one game in this doubleheader. It's very tough to sweep a doubleheader, and the Reds, like, they, like we do, mentioned uh, pulled off a big time upset win they were getting plus 170 plus in that game uh, the Cardinals minus 250 I believe in that one with Miles Michaelis in game one and Cardinals won that game pretty handily they had they had the lead basically the whole way so uh, you know I could see the Reds stealing a game in this doubleheader if I was forced to play it that's where I would look taking the Reds on the money line either in both games just to uh, guarantee you got plus money in both spots or maybe the run line in one of the games so uh, that's where I'm leaning right now but not a lot of information for this doubleheader unfortunately Next up, we see the Chicago Cubs taking on the Colorado Rockies. We're going to see Jose Urania and Wade Miley as the projected starters. You know, the Colorado Rockies' numbers offensively away from home have not been great in the last month, and that is the case for against left-handed pitching as well, as they're dead last in the league in isolated power against lefties on the road, and they're 28th in Team OPS. Their strikeout percentage is up there at 25.2%, so I don't love their chances against Miley, who's actually had a pretty good start to the season. I know he started late because of an injury, but as hasn't been too bad for Chicago. On the other side, Jose Urania is coming off a good start against the Diamondbacks, but he's been so inconsistent this year. He has better numbers on the road, but not by much. It's still a 5.00 ERA in his road start. 36 innings pitched, only 18 strikeouts on the road with 18 walks as well. So a one-to-one -one walk to strikeout ratio is not going to get it done. I'm going to take the Cubbies at home on the money line at Wrigley Field. Next up, we see the Baltimore Orioles taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. Kyle Bradish and Jose Barrios are your starters. I'm going to lean towards the over in this game. You know, I do think Kyle Bradish is trending in the right direction, and he's had a pretty good second half of the season, but he's faced the Blue Jays quite a bit this year. 17 innings of work, and most of those innings coming in the last month. He faced them back on August 9th, August 15th, and, and September 6th, and he hasn't really fared too well in any of those games. His ERA overall against the Blue Jays is above 7 this season, so I can't really trust him in this game. But on the other side, Jose Brios has been inconsistent this season. His season ERA is still above five like Bradish. And uh, overall, you know, his last start wasn't bad against the Rays. It was actually a really good start, six and a third, uh, one earned run. But he's been all over the place, even in his home games where he's pitched a little bit better. He gave up four earned back on August 29th at home against the Cubs. Eight earned in the previous home start to the Guardians uh, back on August 12th. So he, he's been inconsistent this season, Barrios has. And I don't really trust him in this one. So I'm going to take the over in the Orioles-Blue Jays ballgame. Next up, we see the Miami Marlins taking on the Washington Nationals. Trevor Rogers and Eric Fetty are your starters. Now, the Miami Marlins bats are not always trustworthy. They've been one of the weaker lineups in baseball in the second half of the year. But Trevor Rogers is in great form his last three outings, quality starts, earning plenty of strikeouts, not really walking a lot of guys, and I do like him in this game against the Nationals. On the other side, Eric Fetty and ERA above five on this season. I don't really trust him even against a pretty weak lineup in Miami. Uh, Fetty's last start, he gave up four earned runs and only three and two-thirds innings of work. He has been giving up a lot of walks this season, not really striking out many batters. Even the home run ball is hurting him as he's given up at least one home run in three of his last four games. So 
I don't trust the Nationals and Fetty in this game. I think the Marlins are favored for a reason. Give me the Miami Marlins on the money line on the road. Next up, we see the Kansas City Royals taking on the Boston Red Sox. Brady Singer and Rich Hill are your starters. Now, Brady Singer's having a good season. Rich Hill's coming off a great start. But I do like the over in this game at Fenway Park. We know Fenway Park, one of the more hitter-friendly ballparks in the league. Rich Hill has not fared well there. His last start was a successful one, like I mentioned. But that was on the road in Camden Yards. His home uh, ERA right now is 5.88 in about 40 innings of work, giving up seven, or, uh, seven home runs. 48 base hits and a 284 opponent's batting average. I don't like him in this matchup against Kansas City. And in the Royals, uh, the Red Sox bullpen has not been good this season. Neither has the Royals. So I do think we're going to see some scoring late in this one. But in the terms of Brady Singer against the Red Sox, he's had a good season for Kansas City. But the Red Sox numbers against righty has been really good in the last month. They're in the top five in team OPS against those right-handers uh, in about 800 plate appearances. The walk percentage is a little bit higher than what we're used to seeing, which is a good start or a good sign to see for the Red Sox. And even the strikeout percentage a little bit lower than what we're used to seeing from, from Boston. So uh, good signs in the right direction for the Red Sox offense. I think we're going to see a lot of offense in this game. The total set pretty high at 9.5, but I think we get over it. Give me the over in the Royals-Red Sox game. Next up, we see the Chicago White Sox taking on the Detroit Tigers. Johnny Cueto and Eduardo Rodriguez are the starters. Johnny Cueto's coming off a rough start in Oakland. He did not fare well. The A's won that game by, by quite a bit in that one in the end. But the Chicago White Sox have crushed lefties. They have a really good matchup here against Eduardo Rodriguez, who's also coming off a bad start himself. And the White Sox have a team OPS of 939 in the last 30 days. It's number one in baseball. A 220 uh, isolated power is ranked fourth in baseball. 13.9% K percentage is the lowest in baseball and a 10.3% walk percentage top five in baseball. So White Sox doing very well against lefties in about 300 plate appearances. So a decent sample size there. Johnny Cueto, like I said, coming off the rough start, but the Tigers offense this season hasn't been great. hasn't been consistent. And I don't think he'll do too much. I don't think the Tigers will do too much against Cueto. Cueto, 2.3 road ERA overall. So faring a lot better on the road than at home. Give me the Chicago White Sox on the money line. Next up, we see the Texas Rangers taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. John Gray is the official starter for the Rangers. No starter for the Rays right now. Now, John Gray faced the Rays back on June 1st, and it was a very good start for him. One of his best of the season, really, of his career. Seven innings, one earned run, and 12 strikeouts. Now, the Rangers still lost that game because their bullpen struggled, and we've seen the bullpen not have a great year this year overall. So, I don't want to deal with the Rangers' bullpen in this game. I'm just going to look at the Texas Rangers through the first five innings. Tampa Bay more than likely going with the bullpen game themselves, and I do think the Rangers could score a few runs on them early on. I think John Gray pitches well. We saw him in his last start against the Marlins, three and two-thirds innings, one earned run and uh, five strikeouts as he starts to get back from his injury. And I think he pitches well enough here to keep the Rangers competitive, but don't want to trust that Rangers bullpen. Give me the Rangers through the first five innings on the money line. In our next game, we see the Oakland Athletics taking on the Houston Astros. Cole Irvin and Jose Urquidy are your starters. I don't love Cole Irvin in this matchup. He's facing a Houston Astros lineup that loves left-handed pitching, especially at Minute Maid Park. And we already saw Cole Irvin, although he was pitching well against the Astros the first few times that he saw them, we saw the last time he faced the Astros, six innings, eight hits, five earned runs, a home run, and a 6-3 to three Astros victory. So a win and a run line cover. I think that's exactly what we're going to see in this one. Jose Urquidy he's not always my favorite starting pitcher to back, but I will say he has impressed me in the last two, three months or so. His ERA below four still uh, 3.62 in his home outing so even better numbers at home coming off a bad start against the angels but he faced the angels quite a bit already this season against the oakland a's i think he has a much better matchup give me the houston astros on the run line in our next game, we see the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the New York Mets. Bryce Wilson and Chris Bassett are your starters. Now, similar to last game, I don't think there's a lot of value in this one, but I will take the home team and lay the one and a half runs with the Mets. As you know, Chris Bassett, although he's coming off a rough start, he's been, he's been pretty good at City Field this season. And Bryce Wilson faced these Mets back on uh, September 7th and didn't pitch well. Gave up four earned runs, gave up a home run, and even though his numbers on the road are a little bit better than his home starts, I still don't think he'll be good enough for the Pirates in the end. Pirates one of the weaker bullpens as well and Wilson this season an ERA above six just can't trust him so give me the New York Mets laying the one and a half runs at City Field. 
Next up, we see the Philadelphia Phillies taking on the Atlanta Braves. Aaron Nola and Jake Odorizzi are your starters. Aaron Nola's faced the Braves quite a bit this season. 21 and a third innings pitched against Atlanta, a 4.22 ERA. But I do like the fact that he's got 25 strikeouts in those innings, only two walks allowed, and a pretty low opponent's batting average of 229. So I think that if he can limit the long ball, limit the base hits, he'll have another successful start here. On the other side, Jake Odorizzi's kind of been all over the place this season. I like the fact that at times in the month of August, he was missing some bats. But overall, only 19 strikeouts in 25 innings is not going to get it done for Odorizzi. I've mentioned it over and over again. I probably sound like a broken record, but Odorizzi is the type of pitcher that needs to miss bats to have success. He's a strikeout-dependent guy, and when he's not missing those bats, he's usually missing inside the zone, which he's given up at least one home run in each of his last five starts. So against the Phillies lineup, that's been very good against righties, believe it or not. Number one team OPS against right-handers in the last month, and number three in isolated power. I think the Phillies can get to Odorizzi enough for a win. So give me the Philadelphia of Phillies on the money line. In our next game, we see the New York Yankees taking on the Milwaukee Brewers. Jamison Tyone and Brandon Woodruff are your starters. Now, I do think Brandon Woodruff is the better starting pitcher in this matchup, and I also think the Brewers have the better bullpen. When it comes to the lineup, I think the Yankees have the better lineup overall, but the Brewers definitely have better numbers against righties in the last month. As Milwaukee's in the top 10 in isolated power against righties, the Yankees ranked 14th in Team OPS. The Yankees are right now ranked 19th in the league, while the Brewers are ranked 12th in the last month. So Brewers have the edge there in the bullpen, in the starting pitching matchup. I like them here on the money line at a really good price. This is a team fighting for its playoff lives. Woodruff 6-0 with a 2.3 ERA in his home starts, 58 and two-thirds home innings. 80 strikeouts, so missing a lot of bats at home. Tyone's been rough on the road, 4.21 ERA. Even though he's got that winning record at 6-2, and two, I don't think it matters much. He's given up 13 home runs in his road starts. So I'm going to take the Milwaukee Brewers. I'm going to take them on the money line. Next up, we see the Arizona Diamondbacks taking on the San Diego Padres. Joe Musgrove and Zach Gallen are the starters. I'm going to take the Diamondbacks in the first five innings. I like them in the full game as well, but when you look at the first five innings, you got Zach Gallon, who's been one of the hotter starting pitchers in the league. Sure, his scoreless streak did come to an end in his last game against the Rockies, but it still was a fantastic start. It was in Coors Field, so six innings, three earned runs, and 11 strikeouts. Unbelievable game for a Coors Field game, and he has been, like I said, one of the best pitchers in the league in the last month, two months, and you know Joe Musgrove has struggled in the last month or so. His last start... Four earned runs yet again to the Los Angeles Dodgers in his last uh, nine and two-thirds innings against the Dodgers and these Diamondbacks. He's given up uh, five home runs and eight earned runs. The Diamondbacks have crushed righty, so no reason for that they can't get to Musgrove yet again. Give me the Diamondbacks in the first five and on the money line in the full game. Next up, we see the Los Angeles Dodgers taking on the San Francisco Giants. No official lineup for this game as the Giants have not announced a starter. But we should see Julio Urias for the Dodgers. And, you know, although the Giants have actually been pretty good against lefties this season offensively, it hasn't been against Julio Urias, who has been outstanding against San Francisco. In 24 innings pitched against the Giants this year, he's given up two earned runs with 25 strikeouts. And that ERA is at .75 through 24 innings against the same team. Opponent's batting average of 184. I got to take Urias and the Dodgers with those kind of numbers against one opposition. And Urias' numbers on the road have been even better than his home starts. 2.11 road ERA. Give me the Dodgers on the run line. In our final game of the night, we see a great pitching matchup between George Kirby and Shohei Otani of the Mariners and the Angels. Now, Shohei Otani, he's been one of the better pitchers in the American League, a 2.55 ERA in the season, even better numbers at home with a 2.19 ERA and 101 uh, strikeouts at home. But the thing is, I got to give the edge to Kirby and the Mariners. I think that the Mariners have the much better bullpen as well as a better lineup. And George Kirby's also been in very good form lately. Another good start for him last time out. Six innings, shutout ball, or it gave up one unearned run. So no earned runs, six strikeouts against the Braves. And the uh, Mariners have won four of the last five starts that Kirby has had, including a game against these Angels back on August 17th. I like the Mariners to win this game in the end, and we're getting a really good price because Otani's on the other side. Give me Seattle money line to end the night. And that's it. Those are the games for Saturday, September 17th. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe, and don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at the Premium Picks tab at PickDogs.com. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.